Ephesians chapter 1. You know, this morning, it's amazing the adventures that God sets me on because, you know, the books that we've been writing and, and, and publishing, every one of those books is actually an adventure. And what I mean by that is God will put a subject on my mind and my heart, and then I'll begin to study it and research it, investigate it. And, uh, and, and then, and, and, and actually, uh, I've got sermon notes that go way back, and I've been putting some of my sermon notes together. It's called uh, sermon, uh, sermon Outlines for Spirit-Filled Men and Women. But anyway, so they're available on the Internet. I've only got three of them. But actually, I, I think I've got, I've got probably between three to 5,000 sermon outlines. Uh, that's how many I have. Uh, because I was never the kind of guy that wanted to, you know, go back. I, I, I mean, I like fresh manna. I like, for, I, I mean, like I've got, like I said, I've got like close, it, I know I have at least 3,000 sermon online. That probably lasts me for quite a long time if that's what I preached, you know. Uh, but, but, you know, I like, and so God puts something in my heart. Sometimes it's through a dream, a vision, just a word, just an inspiration. And, and this last week, God just dropped it in my heart over a week ago on the subject of his power, God's power. And I just began to study the power of God. Of course, I've done it through the years. And, but, but I studied it from Genesis all the way to the end of the book of Revelation. And I began to look at the power of God and, uh, and, and what the power of God does. You know, God is almighty. How many you know that God's almighty? That means he has all power. Everything. You know, he, he, he's over everything. He's the supreme authority. He, he's it. All power is under him. And when Jesus came, the Bible says Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And as we began to talk about the power of God this morning, exactly what it, does it mean? What does it look like? Uh, what does it do? And, and, you know, there's some things that we don't understand or maybe we do understand that's linked to God's power. For instance, God's glory. You look up the word glory. It's throughout all the Bible. And, you know, God's glory is actually God's power. It's his power manifested in the visible realm. That's what God's glory is. It's when God's power is manifested in the visible world. And then we use the word grace. And if you study the word grace, it comes from the word chariz, which we get the word charisma, which we use for the gifts of the Holy Ghost, the power gifts, the revelation gifts, and the utterance gifts. And really what grace is, it's, the, it's, it's, it's God's power at work in you. That's what grace is. How, how many of you have experienced the grace of God? You, you, you couldn't be saved. That's God's power at work in you. And, and we know that the, the, the Father is all powerful. The, the Son is all powerful. The Holy Ghost is all powerful. And, and we know that there's power in the word. Say power in the word. You know, for the word of God, listen, the word of God, now I, I believe it's not just the logos, it's the rhema, it's the living word that's been quickened in your heart by the Holy Ghost, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart Neither is there any creature that has not manifested in his sight. I mean, he sent his word and he healed him. And, and he healed them all. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him. The word, the word is powerful. H have any of you ever spoke the word to a problem and the problem was taken care of? Because God confirms his word with signs and wonders following. The early church was built upon the foundation of the power of God. Did you know that? Matter of fact, Paul said, my preaching and teaching was not with enticing words of men's uh, wisdom, but in demonstration and power of God. Why? That your faith, your faith, your confidence, your trust, would not be built upon the wisdom of man, but upon the power of God. The early church, the, 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 the church that was given birth to after the resurrection of Christ, it was not given birth to until after the day of Pentecost. 
And, and how many of you know what the day of Pentecost was? It was when the promise of the Father came. And remember uh, what John said. He said, I baptize you in water, but he that comes after me, I'm not worthy to untie his shoes. He said, but he's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. Say, fire. 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 <laughs> how, many, how many of you need a little bit of fire tonight? <laughs> Fire, and Jesus said, when he ascended to heaven, he said, it's necessary for me to go away. In the Gospel of John 14, 15, and 16, he talked about, he said, for if I go not away, then the comforter will not come. But when he comes, he will endue you with power from on high. So I, I began, I did, I, I looked up every scripture with the word power, with the word almighty, anything that dealt with the power of God, uh, his might. His mighty right arm, his mighty left hand, and, and, and I ran all the scriptures off, and I began to go through them and meditate on them. And Actually, what I'm going to do is I've got one book back there. It's nothing but the signs, wonders, and miracles of the Bible. That's all it is. Now, now you know, it's in the Bible, but what's really strange to me is when I got to looking, because I like to meditate. What do you mean meditate? How many of you, how, how many of you like to worry? Good, none of you. How many of you do find yourself at times worrying? How many of you at times find a thought in your head? It could be an old song that you remembered when you were a kid or something, and it just keeps on repeating and repeating and repeating. Well, that's what biblical meditation is. It's you taking the Word of God, and you get it into your mind, you get it into your heart, you get it into your mouth, you begin to speak it and sing it and talk it and walk it, and all of a sudden, as you begin to do that with the Word of God, Something supernatural begins to happen inside of you. I'm telling you, it is supernatural. The Holy Spirit will take the words that you've been hiding in your heart, you've been singing, you've been talking, you've been thinking, you've been speaking, you've been walking, you've been meditating on, and he causes it to become alive. And it explodes inside of you. And it brings what we call the substance of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So faith would give substance to what we're hoping for. And what is it that we're hoping for? That the promises of God would take on flesh and blood in our lives. Yeah. How, how many of you know that, that, and I know scientists can do it now, but the way that God designed women to get pregnant was through intimacy. How, how many of you ladies are glad that you don't get pregnant just because your husband looks at you? Uh, what do you think, D? What, would you want that? If Charles just looked at you with a very intense stare, would you want to get pregnant? Okay, but how does pregnancy happen? Through intimacy, isn't it? Between you and your husband, right? Isn't that how you get pregnant, ladies? Well, listen, do you know how you get pregnanted by the Spirit of God? You and Jesus all alone. You, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. And you get alone, and you begin to sweet, speak sweet, soft, lovely words to Christ, and he begins to speak to you, and all of a sudden something begins to rise up within. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I mean, how many of you, many times, you begin to pray, and it's kind of like you're not really getting anywhere? You know, I like to get together with uh, my brothers and pray with them. I like to get together with the staff or with the ministry team here and pray with them. But how many of you know that really when I'm together with you all, I'm not really, really going deep? <laughs> you know why? It's too embarrassing. It's too intimate. You know, when I, when, I, when I spend my time in prayer, it's me and God, period. I'm all alone. I'm there a lot of times, many times. I'll wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. The Holy Spirit rolled me out of bed. And I tell you, I just go down into my prayer closet, and I just begin to talk to God. What am I doing? I'm speaking his word. I'm agreeing with his word. I'm, 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 I'm saying what he says about me. And I say, Lord, your word declares, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, Father, I thank you the greater one lives within me. I thank you the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells inside of me. I thank you that you said I can do all things through you who strengthens me. And I just begin to speak and talk and begin to sing. And you don't want to hear me sing. But my father likes to hear me sing. 
I'll just sing to him. And you know what begins? Something begins to rise up inside of me. The, the faith begins to come. Joy begins to come. Love begins to come. The fire begins to burn. And so I began to meditate on the scriptures of God's power. And it just began to blow me away. And I'm writing a meditation book on nothing but the power of God. I'm only doing this because it's for me. But the Lord spoke to me. I've done over 16 books on just nothing but scriptures on meditation. And, and the Lord spoke to me. I said, Lord, why am I doing this? I know it helps me because I, I'll take these books and I'll just, they're not my words, they're his words. And he said, son, the day will come when I pour out my spirit. He said, and my people, they need to hide the word of God in their heart. He said, because when my spirit comes, it's like when the rain comes from heaven in the spring and the sun is shining and the heat is coming. And you know, the life, the seed that has been planted in the soil is going to become alive and it's going to spring up. Now, here's a sad fact. I, I, I've been a, a student of revivals ever since I've been born again back in 1975. I like to listen to if, if you, you can list, go online and look up Duncan Campbell and the Heberdeen revival. You ought to listen to it and see what God God did well listen in just a matter of weeks on the islands of the Hebrides, right off of Great Britain the Spirit of God came in, in such a powerful way to where over 45,000 people they didn't just pray a prayer of salvation they were converted boom I mean, they were passionate for God. Uh, the same thing in the Welsh revival. When the Spirit of God swept in, the power of God came. See, that's what an awakening is. is when the power of God comes. And I mean, multitudes got saved. But here was the difficulty. Here's the problem. That it, within six years, in the Welsh revival, the Hebridean revival, and many other revivals, you could not tell that God even showed up. The Welsh revival was so powerful, they shut down all the bars, closed down on their own. The pol they had to let all the policemen go. They didn't need any policemen. The judges had nothing to do. There was no crime in all of Wales. It was just incredible. In a time of, of great uh, 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 darkness, all of a sudden, it was like you stepped into heaven, but in six years, it was gone. Do you know why? Because they did not hide the word of God in their hearts. So the power of God can come and arrest someone like he did me. That's how I got saved. It was the power of God. The power of God arrested me when the fear of the Lord came on me. Now the power of God will manifest itself in many, many different ways. Uh, just like this morning when I was preaching, I looked out, I saw some of the people crying. And then we had some of the people over here, like Sister Tiny, the Holy Ghost hit her and she couldn't help but just begin to laugh and laugh and laugh. And I mean, God's power would just come upon people and it would do different things. And sometimes it would just hold people. Uh, I know there's some, like, for instance, a good friend of mine who went to be home with Jesus, Henry Gruber moved. And I call it the power of God. You might call it the anointing. You might call it the presence. You might call it the glory. But it's the power of God. And Henry moved in such a depth of the power of God that he could speak for three hours and when he got done you said please keep going please keep going I'm claiming that 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 power y'all want that power no 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 you don't want to get out of here no but you know what and we would hear Henry preach speak to us for three hours and we would beg him Henry keep going and I believe that's the way it was with Jesus Jesus they said no man ever spoke like this man he said the religious people, you know, they, they, they don't speak with power. They don't speak with, you're going to call it the anointing or the glory or the presence. But Jesus, they said, we've never heard a man speak words filled with so much power to where Jesus, he's out there in the wilderness and the people come out and they find him. And when they find Jesus, he begins to teach them, right? And all of a sudden, before you know it, it reveals three days have come and gone. And they had not yet ate. Now, come on, you know <laughs> that for a man to speak for three days and you haven't ate, that's the power of God. Yes, that's the power of God. Wow. I mean, the power of God. And so he, when he opened his mouth, he had the spirit without measure. Did you know that? I mean, see, we know there is no limit to God. God is unlimited. He's, he's got limitless power. 
I mean, I limited power. I mean, we talked about this morning in, 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 in Genesis 1 when he said, let there be stars in the heaven and two trillion uh, 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 galaxies exploded into being with up to 400 billion stars in each galaxy. Two trillion. Boom. Let there be. Wow. And what's incredible, you know how we got into this mess? The devil saw God's power, God's authority, and he wanted it. Now, he couldn't get it, and the only way he could get it was to deceive man, because, see, God gave man dominion on the earth. God gave man power and authority on the earth. As a matter of fact, the Bible says God stood by as Adam called every animal, and he gave a name to each animal. Now, some people imply that when he gave a name, Adam actually instilled within them their nature and their character. I'm not saying that. All I know is Adam gave a name to every animal, and God stood by to see what he would call them. And the devil said, I can't, I can't take away God's power and authority. He saw, I believe he saw God create the heavens and the earth when it comes to the physical world, not the spiritual world, because he created the spirit and then the physical. And he saw it and he wanted it. You know, that's what men, you know what evil men want more, evil men want power more than godly men do. They do. And matter of fact, there's someone who was well known who just came out and said, those who deserve power the least get it the most. Do you know why? Because evil men are always wanting power. They're wanting control. They're wanting to manipulate, right? And godly men, you know, godly men, we're just, we're, we're just, you know, living our lives. Aren't we just living our lives? Just, you know, living our lives. But you know what? God wants us to walk in his power. We, we, matter of fact, Jesus, until he got baptized in the Holy Ghost and power, he came out in the power of the Spirit. He didn't heal one person. But after the Holy Ghost came on him and he overcame the temptations, because the first place you've got to see people understand, well, if God wants me to walk in power, and when I got the Holy Ghost, I got I got the power of God, then how come there's no power manifested in me? Well, we got to back up and say, yeah, why? I've got the Holy Ghost, and, with, and the Holy Ghost, when he came, all that he had became mine. I always tell people this. I said, you may have the Holy Ghost, but does the Holy Ghost have you? That's all the difference. See, man was created. Hey, matter of fact, in the Psalms and Hebrews, it said, Who is man that thou shouldest consider him, or the son of man that thou shouldest look upon him? You made him lower than the angels, and yet thou hast exalted him above all things god created us to move to function to flow in the power of god you know of jesus of nazareth who went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil you know of jesus of Nazareth, how god anointed him with the holy ghost and power jesus was anointed with the holy ghost and power say power when you and I lay hands on the sick and they get healed, you know what that is? That's the power of God healing them. When, when, you, when, you, when you pray in tongues, when you pray in the Spirit, that's the power of God being manifested in your flesh. Everything about God is power. He's, he's, he's a consuming fire. God is nothing but living, breathing, thinking, moving, functioning, unlimited, unfathomable power. There's nothing impossible with God. And then God comes along and says, now hook up with me. And I'm going to turn you into a channel. For out of your belly, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. Water. You know, I, I, uh, it's amazing because I, I see this in, in most of us that I understand how I need the power of God. It was the power of God that delivered me. And matter of fact, uh, let, let's go ahead and read there in Genesis chapter, I mean in Ephesians chapter 1. And you know this. Um, and we can begin down here. All of chapter 1 is amazing. Paul had a divine revelation from heaven. And he, he reveals the reality of God in such amazing ways that you know it's not the intellect of a man. It's, the, it's, it's, it's God himself speaking through the Apostle Paul. 
And, and he's talking to the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention you in my prayers. Now listen what he's going to pray. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, listen, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of what? Glory, God's manifested presence. The father, he's called the Father of glory. Jesus is called the Lord of God's manifested presence. The early church was built on the glory of God. The book of Acts, the glory of God showed up. That's how the church grew. They didn't grow by programs. They didn't grow by having fancy buildings. They didn't grow by intellect. They didn't grow. He, Paul said, I didn't come to you in excellency in speech. I didn't come to you with eloquent words. I came to you in power and demonstration of the Spirit. And that's where God wants me. That's where God wants you. Reach up and grab that. That's what God wants. His, you were designed to be a vessel, a temple, a tabernacle. You were designed for the glory of God to flow through you. Did you know that? That you were, you were, that's what you were designed for. God's glory wants to, you were made to be filled. His house, the house of God in the old covenant when Solomon dedicated it. And when they dedicated the tabernacle in the wilderness, the fire by night, the cloud by day, the day of Pentecost, a fire was upon their head. And the, the glory came to where the Bible says that even the priest couldn't stand for reason of the glory. That house is... Was a, was a type and a shadow of you and me. God's glory can be so, the power of God can be so tangible in us, it can be so real in us, it, it can be seen and felt and heard in such a way to where literally people will come into our presence, conviction will come on them, healing will come on them, deliverance will come on them. I, I've been at times, and, and, and you say, well, Pastor Mike, do you walk in the glory of God 24 hours a day? I walk in some of it. I walk in a little bit of it. There's something different. You know what? Before I got born again, i tell you what, the girls avoided me. I'm just being honest with you. Girls stayed away from me. I mean, it's not that I didn't chase them. They ran from me. But you know what? How many of you guys can acknowledge this? When I got born again, I had to beat him away with a baseball bat. Now, I know that was the devil, but also there was something about me. It, they did, it wasn't my, my, my good looks or my intelligence or my uh, eloquence of speaking. It was God's glory. They looked at me, and it was light. How many know that light will draw bugs? All kinds of bugs, right? You say, I just don't understand. The deeper I go in God, the more weirdos come around me. <laughs> it's the glory of God. But you got you to gotta have so much of the glory of God to where those people who are all messed up, when they get around you, they get healed. They get delivered. They get set free. And it's like a forest fire that begins to spread. The glory of God. You know, when I was, uh, the first time I experienced the glory of God when I was about seven years old. Oh, I was a mess. But I got up one, late, one night. It was in the wintertime in Wisconsin, right off the Great Lakes. And we had a perforated, uh, uh, milk-colored window in our little bathroom. And I remember the moon was shining on the, on the snow. I got up and I went to the bathroom, turned around, washed my hands, and I looked out and I saw through that I saw in the yard of our house, I saw three crosses. I saw three crosses, and the middle cross had blood running off of it. And right then, and I still remember, I wept and I cried like a baby looking at that cross. I wept and I cried. And my mom, surely, if she was alive, she'd tell you, for the next couple weeks or couple months, I was a completely different little boy. That glory changed my personality, but I didn't have the word of God in my heart. I didn't have nobody to lead me to Jesus. I had no one to teach me the truth. But there's power. Everything about God is power. And it, notice what it says. It, it's just so powerful. He says he's the Lord of glory. 
and, and that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the Lord of glory, the Lord of power. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Why? That you may know what the hope of his calling. So why, why do we need to move in the power and the glory of God? Because you're not going to set the captives free without God's power in your life. You're not going to set the captives free. How many of you came here this morning in an, tonight in an automobile? Let me see your hands. The rest of you walked, right? Okay, and every one of your vehicles, you have what we call an engine. It's not a motor. That People call it a motor, but it's not a motor. and It's an engine, a gasoline or a diesel engine, unless you've got a Tesla, or if you have an electric vehicle, then that is called a motor. And if you've if you, if you got an engine in your car, it's rated by what we call horsepower. Now, this morning I was sharing with you that there's something that excites men about horsepower. I don't know what it is. When I was a kid growing up, man, we, we, we would literally have engines tore apart, and we would even have them uh, taken to a, a guy who would make the cylinders bigger and put bigger pistons in them and, 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 and set it all up to where we would take that engine that was maybe 130 horsepower to where it was 300 horsepower. I found out that they've actually got an engine that's over 168,000 horsepower. Can you imagine if you had that in your car? <laughs> you wouldn't go anywhere. You'd put a little bit of gas to the metal, and you would wear your tires down to the rims. But, I mean, we are always in the horsepower. Well, you know, electric motors are rated by horsepower. And an electric motor, probably in your fan at home, you've got fans. How many got fans around your house? And, and, and the ratings. And if you look on there, there's a sticker there. And it gives you a rating of, like, maybe a quarter horsepower. Or maybe uh, you've got a pump that's in your well. And it might be a three-quarter horsepower pump. I just dropped a two-horsepower pump in our well up front. A two-horsepower pump. And so the horsepower determines how much the flow. Like, for instance, on a three-quarter horsepower water pump, you'll get a flow of maybe 12 gallons a minute. Well, with this puppy, I get 30 gallons a minute. Praise the Lord. For in other words, the bigger the, the horsepower, the more powerful flow, the more, the more what happened. I just found out that they've actually got an electric motor that's over 100,000 horsepower. 100,000 horsepower. But now think about this. Jesus had the spirit without limit. So, you know, here we are, we, you, you know, if you have, have, have any of you ever put a, a motor on some kind of device, a load that you had to spin, and, but your motor didn't have enough horsepower, and so when you turned it on, your motor kind of like hummed. Any of you ever do that? No one's ever done that. Have you ever done that, Donnie? Have you ever seen a, a motor, an electric motor, that didn't have enough horsepower to take care of the load, to spin whatever it was, a generator or whatever it was, a pump? You didn't have enough horsepower. And so that, and, and you might be able to coax it along. I've done that, which is dumb. Don't ever grab that belt and try to spin it and get it going because you'll lose your fingers. But I've done stupid stuff like that. And, and you try to get that motor, but that motor, it just, now maybe if you get it going, it might spin it, right, Ray? It might spin it, it might do it, but you're going to burn that motor up because it wasn't rated for that. you got to get a bigger horsepower. Well, you know, I find out that we as Christians, oh, we're trying to get the power of God to move. Ooh, God, please, God, you get 15, 20 people praying over the same person with a problem. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, God, oh, God. Oh, we call upon your glory. We call upon your power. And God says, excuse me, I'm not your problem. You're the problem. There's something wrong. It's not flowing through you. I have it all. It's all yours. Everything I have is yours. All the power that God has is yours. Woo, doesn't that make you want to shout? And he said, not only that, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means come to harm you. Well, if I just sing long enough, maybe the power will come. If I just pray in tongues long enough, maybe the power will come. If I just fast, I had a guy that preached for me many years ago, an older guy. And I, I was moving in the power of God. And he came, and the guy was so skinny 
that I'm telling you what, he had to tease the hair on his legs to keep his socks up. No, 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 I'm just teasing. <laughs> I mean, but this guy, do you remember that guy? I can't remember. He was a skinny old guy. And so, uh, you know, and God did show up some. And I'm taking him to the airport. And he said, pull over, pull over. And I pulled over and he went out and he's puking, he's puking. And I said, and I can't remember his name. I'm glad I don't. And I said, brother, what is going on with you? He said, oh, brother, you, you don't understand. For me to walk in the anointing of God, I, 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 I've almost got to starve myself to death. I said, brother, I said, you've been deceived. He said, what? I said, you don't have to starve yourself to death to get the power of God to move. I said, the Bible says, he therefore that worketh miracles among you. How does he do it? By the works of the law? By fasting? No by faith he does it by faith by what faith now your faith can grow your faith can develop your faith can mature your faith can go places where you can't even imagine all things are possible to those who Amen. go to church doesn't say that those who believe so, it's, so Jesus had so much power that when Lazarus died, Jesus had to be very specific in what he prayed. He stood before that tomb of Lazarus. They said, Lord, you don't understand. He's been dead for four days. His body is corrupting. I mean, they didn't have the techniques of what they do today in order to preserve the bodies. And so his body is rotting away. He stinks. His flesh is just turning to mush. And Jesus said, um, I am the resurrection and the life. I am. I am. He said, if you would believe. He said, only believe and you will see the power of God. I'll say again. Only believe and you will see the power of God. Really, Pastor Mike? Yeah, believe. But how can you believe? Your, your believing level cannot be greater than the word of God hidden in your heart. Can't be any greater. We're, not, we're seeing a little bit of, you know, I'm going to call it sparklers. A little bit of fireworks. A little bit. But we're not seeing what they did in the book of Acts. Why? Because they lived in a different realm than we did. They Lived in a place. Stephen got so full of power and faith. He was full of faith and power. Say full of faith and power. Do you know that's available for you and me? But, but why? Why do we want the faith and power? Do we want it to be known, to be seen, to be heard, to sell our books, to become famous? Well, if that's your purpose, I, I'm not concerned about you ever really moving in the great power of God. You never will. See, apostles gave evidence to the resurrection of Christ by great signs and wonders. Great, I mean, great power, great power, great power. Now, I think we've known of men who, and do you know that's for all of us? Do you know he said, you will lay hands on the sick, you will speak in new tongues, you will cast out devils, you, I mean, the works that I did, Jesus said, you'll do also. He said, all that I have is yours. Say, it's mine. If you'll pay the price. Well, pastor, you just said there's no price to pay. No, no, I didn't say that. You just got to understand what God wants from you. The first thing that God wants, and it came out of the mouth, Father, not my will, but your will be done. That's where you got to come to. At 12 years old, he said, I must be about my father's business. See, Jesus, he, he never really told the father what to do. He agreed with the father. The father would tell him what to do. I wish I could tell you I live my life that way 24-7, but I, I haven't. But thank God we're in a new year, a new time, a new month, a new day. It's a new beginning. Isn't it a new beginning? See, that's your inheritance, God's power. See, the devil, he can't have it, but God's given it to us. Yes. Jesus rose from the dead. He said, behold, all power, all authority is mine. You know, you study the word power and authority. They seem to be almost in the same context. Um, God is all powerful. But, but let, let's go here. And he says this in, 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 in verse 16. Or excuse me, verse 19. And what is, he said, the eyes of our understanding might be enlightened. 
that we might know the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. The exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. Huh. Did you get that? Say exceeding greatness. Now, this is written to the Ephesians, the, the church in Ephesus. It's not written to apostles or prophets, evangelists, pastors. It's written to the church. And what is it? he said, that God may open up the eyes of your understanding, that you may know the hope of your calling, the riches of his glory, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. So there's a category right there that you've got to be involved in. Those who believe. Now, God's given me authority. God's given me power. The first thing that he wants, and when I got born, I was born in the incorruptible seed of the word of life. You know, the very first thing you've got to do with the power of God in your life, and you've got the power of God. If you've been born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, you've got the power of God in you. First thing you do is you use the power of God to overcome sin. That's it, man. What is sin? Sin, listen, all power belongs to God. Every part of my being belongs to God. I was made for his pleasure. My mind, my emotions, my will, my flesh, my speech, it all belongs to God. So I've got to take the, the power and the authority that God's given me, I've got to use it on my flesh, and I've got to now speak to my flesh. And I tell my flesh, no flesh, you're not watching that. You're not doing it. Shut up. Be quiet. How many of you as parents have used your authority and power at times? Come on. You use your authority. Because if you didn't, your house would be nothing but chaos, wouldn't it? it, it, it your children would become monsters in a heartbeat. They just naturally go that way. But you use your power. I'm not saying you're ugly, mean, or nasty. You're, you just use your, the power and the authority. No, you're not. So, I found out that when I use the power, submit yourself to God, right? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil because he's coming. Why? He wants to separate me. See, the only time I'm a threat to the devil, Brother Howard, is when I'm moving in the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Woo! Oh, when I'm moving in the power of the Holy Ghost, it's like taking a hot knife on a, on, on, on a, on, on a soft uh, stick of butter, and it just cuts right through it. Boom. Different levels of power. Anointing, glory, presence. According to where I'm at. What is the exceeding greatness of his power? To us, word who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. His mighty power. Power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And what did he do? He set him at his own right hand. The right hand of the king is a place like Joseph with Pharaoh. It's the place of total authority. No one greater. Uh, Pharaoh said there will be no one greater than you, Joseph, in all the land but me. And Jesus is sitting at the right, the right hand of the mighty power of God. And the word of the king is law. So when Jesus speaks, it's done. Can we actually get to a place where we're moving in so much of the power and the glory and the presence and the anointing of God to where everything we say will come to pass? Oh, you can. It said not one word that Samuel spoke fell to the ground. And I think not one word that Moses spoke fell to the ground. Did you know that not one word that Jesus spoke fell to the ground? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word who believe? And that, that, uh, uh, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that fill all, all in all. Now listen, so he's Lord of his church, his body. That's us. Say, that's us. And he put the devil under our feet. I said the devil's under our feet. 
Now, I, I've had the wonderful privilege, but yet I've had the shame of not walking and moving and continuing in that flow of God's power, glory, presence, anointing. I've tapped into it at times. What times did you do that, Pastor Mike? When I was just obsessed with Jesus, obsessed with his word, obsessed with his will. You know, I was just down uh, in last March. I was in the mountains of West Virginia. We were invited to speak at a church. And, you know, sometimes when I go away, I, I spend more time in prayer. I spend more time in the word. I spend more time in and so I, I'm kind of like building up myself in my most holy faith. I'm just going after God. Now, I'm not really trying to get the power of God because I realize that all God's power has already been given to me. But I understand something. I'm, I'm like, I have what they call a solid state motor speed control here. And uh, I, I had another one, but it wouldn't work because these fans on these, these big blowers, they, they have like three amps. And I tried a 1.5 amp. And guess what? It, it just doesn't, it won't let the power come through. And so I went out and I bought myself a five amp. It, it's really a rheostat, but I, I bought myself a, a five amp controller. So what that means is I take one side and AC is alternating. It's not like DC, which is direct, it's, it's, it's direct current. Alternating means the electricity in, in your wires are, are going like this at the speed of light almost. So you take this and you, you connect it up to the load, which is the fan, right? And then you take the other side and you connect it up to the power source, right? And then there's a little control on the front, which is a little, there, there's a little uh, switch in here. And when I hook that up, then I'll put this little switch on here, and it always starts at the bottom. You never start your fan at full speed, and, and come on, where are you? I'm going to try to connect it. It don't really need to be connected. Give me another hour. No, I'm just teasing. So anyways, you connect it up, and then you begin to crank it. And as you turn it on, all of a sudden, that fan begins to hum, and then the fan begins to spin. And you can turn that up all the way, and next thing you know, that fan is going at its full speed. Now, you could actually give it more power. Now, it's 120 volt, but if you hooked it up to a 240 volt uh, source, you would burn that fan up because it's designed for 120 volts. Listen, did you know you were designed to carry all of God's unlimited power? <laughs> but there's a rheostat. Now, here's the problem, though. Let's say, for instance, that, that you've got this connected to the load, and you're a believer, and let's say you're, you're, born, you're born again. you got the Holy Ghost, but you're not in the Spirit at all. You're not moving in the Spirit at all. So either, number one, you're just not connected up to God, and he's the source of all your power, and Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. Either you're not connected up to God at all, which means that I don't care how much you spin that puppy. I don't care how much you rub that butt puppy. I don't care how much you anoint that puppy. I don't care how much you speak to that puppy. There ain't no power coming through it. No power whatsoever. But if you connect that up to the power source, and then you begin to use that rheostat, and you begin to open it up, all of a sudden, the electricity begins to flow, and that fan begins to spin. And so you've got one fan here, it's spinning at one-fourth of its ability. You've got another one spinning at half of its ability, and then you've got another one fully, that, that's flowing in the full capacity. Now you might say, I don't understand it, God. I'm only spinning at one-third of my ability. And God says, I know it. You've got a problem. And it ain't me. It's you. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So I'm down in West Virginia as we get ready to close here, and I, I just, I, I'm just, I'm just scratching the surface of this reality. So I go down there, and the first surface, it was good. My wife gave a tongues. I gave interpretation. I had a couple words of knowledge. But guess what? All day long, I'm doing nothing but praying, and I'm reading and meditating on the Word. Reading and praying and meditating on the Word. Second night, mm, God's beginning to show up. 
I got up the third morning. I heard the Lord say, get ready. He said, I'm going to appear in the service tonight, and I'm going to do suddenlies. I've got some of it on video. I'm telling you what. I walked out into the midst of those people and the power of God was so present that there was a lady there, an older lady, probably in her 60s. She's been believing God for her husband for years to get filled with the Holy Ghost and he just sits like a lump on a log. I go to her, I put the video up, I go to her and the power of God is flowing, man. I'm just speaking by the Spirit. She crumples. I don't push her down. I don't, shove, I don't believe in pushing people down. She crumples at my feet. She lays out. I turn around to him. I said, come here, brother. I said, you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. He said, no. I said, now you are. I laid my hands on him. He crumpled towards me. He began to speak in tongues. Before he hit the floor, he's praying in tongues and weeping. He's weeping. He's weeping. It wasn't me. It was the power of God. That's for all of us. Well, Pastor, what made the difference from day one to day three? Pastor, what made the difference that, that time when that woman kept stabbing you in the face with a knife and the knife couldn't penetrate you and you told the devil to come out and she flew through the air and she crumpled. She got born again and filled the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues instantly. What was the difference? It was where I was at with God. Where I was at. I was giving myself to nothing but the word of God in prayer. Remember, that's what the disciples said, isn't it? They said, because they saw this, they said, we're going to give ourselves to nothing but the word of God and prayer. So you see men who began to pay the price. That's what they did. Now you say, but Pastor Mike, I've got to go to work. No, you don't understand that many times when I was moving in the power of God, I was working a full-time job. But I'd get up in the morning, I'd be singing, talking, speaking the word, speaking the word. I bought one of the little bread baskets when I was up in Billville, Pennsylvania at a Christian bookstore. And I used to work for the man. He had, a, he had a bookstore in Lewistown and I would do some work for him and I bought one of them. And I would take a scripture and get up in the morning, I'd take three scriptures and stick them in my pocket. 21-year-old kid, I'd pull it out. Sometimes I had to walk five miles, three miles to work in the snow because my truck, my transmission went out because I backed into a guy's sewage system and my truck sunk and I, and I, I, I ripped my transmission out. So I, I had to get up. But I never groaned. I never, because faith doesn't complain. Faith doesn't moan and groan. Faith rejoices. And I didn't know it, but I was moving in faith that I would have those scriptures memorized before I got to work. And all day as I was loading up the feed bags and delivering them to the Mennonites and the, and, and the Amish, I'd be speaking the word. and speak, I'd be quoting those scriptures I had that day, quoting those scriptures. And the next morning I'd get up and I'd take some more scriptures and I'd take some more scriptures and I'd take some more scriptures. And for over a year I did that. And I'm just, I'm just developing myself. I didn't know what I was doing. No one taught me this. I'm just, I'm just getting full of the word and full of the word and full of the word. And next thing you know, folk gospel businessmen, they heard some of my stories and they began to have me come and minister in a lot of those meetings. And I'd go into full gospel businessmen's meetings and I would stand up front and I'm moving in the power of God. I'd get done preaching at a lookout and the, the gift of discernment and the word of knowledge and wisdom was so clear and so real. I, I, I couldn't help it. And I, I'd call, and my wife saw this too, because when I married her, I was moving in the power of God. And I, I'd call him out and I'd say, Sister, you have thus and thus and thus and thus. And I said, Come out. And she'd step out and she'd get 10, 15 feet away from me and she would just crumple to the floor. And another one, and another one, and another one. And for, that's how this church started, isn't it, Donnie? I was moving in the power of God. The rheostat, it wasn't full blast. <laughs> but I had, it, I had power coming, power coming. Amen. Close your eyes, please. In a great house, they are not only vessels of gold and silver, but of wood and of earth. Some to honor, some to dishonor. But if a man will purge himself of these things, 
He will become a vessel unto honor, meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. God wants his power flowing through your life. You're the container. You're the pipeline. You're the wire. You're the vessel. And that's what Jesus came. He, he didn't come to keep it to himself. He came for it to flow through you and me. He wants he needs this power of who he is to flow through us to set the captives free. Will you volunteer? Will you say, here am I, Lord. Use me. Show me, Lord, what I have to do. Show me what I have to do. Now, the devil is going to say, oh, the price is too much. You've got to die to what your flesh wants. No, 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 no. Your stinky old flesh, it's a black hole. It will never be satisfied. It will never be content. It will never be fulfilled. You've just got to decide. Father, we surrender tonight to your power to your will, to your purpose. Will you decide in your heart tonight that you will not die being a stick in the mud? Yes, amen. Just living life the way your flesh wants. But will you decide, God, I will, I will come in line and see you fulfill in my life your divine purpose and plan. Will you pray that right now? Father, Will you please use me for your glory? Help me to die to the lies, the deceptions of the world, the flesh, and the devil. In Jesus' name, amen. So much, people. There's, there's so much more, Gary. You know that, Gary? I, and I've, I've experienced flashes of it through the years. I know what it takes to live there. I told the Lord this year, I said, this is 2023, God. I've made this commitment before, but I said, Lord, you know, I've walked in your glory since I was a 19-year-old kid. I, I mean, I've seen it. I'm not exaggerating. I've walked in it. I experienced it. And it was just God. It wasn't anything else. It was God. And I know what it takes to be full of his glory, full of his power, full of his presence, full of his anointing, full of his spirit, whatever you want to call it. But I know what it takes. And it's right there. Man should not live by bread alone. But you know what? You and I, Smith Wigglesworth did something that people just, we just, we just don't get it. They didn't get it. I knew Lester Summerall. I love Lester. Lester ordained me. I, I, I spoke with Lester. I was on Lester Summerall's TV network five days a week. I, but Lester never got where Smith Wigglesworth did. Because Lester, because we, we see, uh, Smith, I don't know, how, he just fell into it. He, he, all he did was give himself nothing but the word of God. And when he got baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, all of that word he had hid in his heart all of those years, all of those years, the rain of heaven came, water the seed, and it came a tremendous harvest. Boom. And Lester as a plumber, as a plumber, see, as a plumber, he began to have miracles that you and I can only imagine, and he was just a plumber. Well, guess what? God's not a respecter of people. Now, our greatest challenge is to take above all the shield of faith and to begin to use it against the fake news, vain amusements, Mickey Mouse stupid information. And instead of, and I'm not just saying cut the world off, I'm saying no, take the shoot of faith and say no 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 you can't force this on anybody it'll never work you've got to do it why for people will be saved healed delivered charles and d i've told you god has such a wonderful plan for your life powerful 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 there is no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow 
go directly to God. You'll find everything you need to. He does it. Remember in Ephesians 3, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. It's there. He wants to use you. When you go down the street and you see a crippled man, one day Smith was going to a meeting, a healing meeting, and as he was going down, he saw a little crippled boy. And, 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 the guy, and, and, and he said to the driver, pull over, pull over. He, he, there's a crippled boy. He was moved with the spirit of compassion. And the guy said, we'll never get to the meeting, Smith. You're already late. He said, pull over. He pulled over and he ran out there and grabbed that little crippled boy. And instantly, all of his limbs straightened up. People started screaming. They knew that little crippled boy. And they brought other sick people out and other sick. Before you know it, the street was packed full of lame, blind, hot people. They had to call in the police. And he began to heal every one of them. He never got to that healing meeting because he had a healing meeting on the street. And that's for you and me. Tell your neighbor that's for you. And tell them that's for me.